All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Peel Your Potential. Man, and I got my brother, phenomenal brother, um, a survivor of that five is what I like to call it. Yeah. Because <laughs> coming from that 70805, man, it's it's difficult, you know. So my brother here, Yul Netta, he is a artist. He's an author, pastor. Um, he is a coach. Yeah. Father. <laughs> Father. You know what I'm saying? Husband. Yeah, yeah. What else? What else you got under your belt, brother? Man, man, listen. Uh, website curator, graphic designer, uh, fashion designer. I got some. I got some titles. I got some I'm names. Bro. I'm bro. You I got sure got. Names. You got some hats. I try to be. I try to. I try to. I try to take a light though. I try I to feel take a light. That. I feel that, man. So, and then. I got to give a shout out to Bima, man. Bima was actually the first ho- uh the first guest on the show. And I didn't yeah. give I didn't give that brother the proper introduction. So when he said his video, this is my apology. Bima, I'm sorry, bro. But uh he did a phenomenal job, you know, worked it out with me, worked out the kinks of the um the first, you know, show with me and it was live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um man, so peel your potential. Um, I feel like God gave me this title, you know what I'm saying? Because especially coming from the black community, man, we got to go through so much, you know. Um, Absolutely. We got to navigate family and how they uh, treat us and and deal with us when we're trying to do better. We got to deal with our peers, um, not only at school, but also in the neighborhood. Yeah. And there's so much we got to fight through, bro. And um. I think God gave me this because we got to peel back so many layers of, you know, hurt, rejection, and then insecurity. And what I love, man, and the reason why I knew you needed to be a part of this show is your platform, your ministry, um, his insecurities. Yes. Because you got to overcome insecurities in order to be what God has called you to be. And, um, you know, and I feel like you will be an expert on this topic. So, you know, kind of share with the people about um, your ministry, you know, what you got going on and some of the obstacles that you had to overcome to be what God has called you to be. That's good questions. Um, so my ministry is I am a founder. That's another title, I guess, of a ministry that I call have called His Insecurities. His Insecurities is designed and created uh, for men to find an atmosphere, a space in which they can collectively come together as a tribe, a unit, and uh, iron sharpen iron iron is basically what we're doing. We're basically going through the layers, kind of like pull back your layers of the things that have uh, we've been battling, the insecurities that we deal with on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Um, And what we do is sharpen each other letting brothers know that you're not by yourself in this situation. Cause what happens is happen is a lot of men feel they're battling alone. That's right. And they feel isolated. So I wanted to create a tribe. I wanted to create a unit where you can cultivate an atmosphere in which we can come together collectively and break down the things that are bothering us, that are hindering us, that are hurting us, that motion wise that we speak to, that a lot of times we don't have a place to do that with. That's and right. his insecurities is an atmosphere in which you can release a lot of emotions, a lot of baggage, a lot of uh, burdens yeah. in which that normally we wouldn't have the space to uh, to release it to. Man, and I understand that, bro, especially, um, you know what I'm saying, coming from the inner city, um, man, we are told by our family Mom, yeah. mama tell you straight up, don't go to school, don't go nowhere till in our business. Um, yeah. So we got to hold so much stuff. And then as men, you know, we want to uphold this image of being tough and um, having everything together. And man, I applaud you, bro, for, you know, bringing this platform about where men can get together and speak. 
um, there's another sister, man. I can't think of her name, but she has created a platform that um, is just bringing out some things too, and it's even You're going. You talking TV. about Marion? Yeah, yeah, bro. Um, yeah, absolutely. Hopefully, you know, I'll be able to get her on here, man. But I love what y'all are doing. Um, and then I'm learning myself, bro, because you know, I shared with you that I'm dealing with um, ADHD. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That the black community just kind of wax over. Oh, that ain't, you know, you just yeah. lazy. You just this. But it's real, man. And it plays in every part of our life and you don't outgrow it. Yeah. Um, so so speak to, I guess, you know, what things you had to go through, um, because you had to go through something in order to get this ministry, you know, off the ground. Absolutely. Um, so as you, if you hinted to, uh, before I'm from Northside Baton Rouge, 70805 Northside. Oh yeah. Uh, Plank Road, Acadian. I was in that area. So I was not born and navigating there. So definitely we had, I had to navigate through poverty. Uh-huh. I had to navigate through public schooling, even though a Struma eventually became a magnet school. It was, there was still a magnet part. Yeah. There was a magnet part. Yeah. And then there was the regular school <laughs> and the regular and the regular park. The regular part didn't care if you Ratchet. was in the Magna Park. Ratchet. Ghost you know Town, 38, Brookstown. Oh, man, I already know. DC brother. Lockdown. Yeah. All of it. So um, went to a Stroma High School, graduated from there. Um, <clears throat> early, there's a lot of my insecurities formed in uh, high school. Oh. Um, I, I always battled thinking because... Um, I didn't look a certain way, didn't it didn't seem a certain way. I always battle with self-esteem. Yeah. Um, and that was something that I, I still had to navigate even now, even in a pastoral role, even in a leadership role, there's some self-esteem issues that I still currently battle that I have to check myself on with the word of God daily, you know what I'm saying? Preach. But but even then I battle self-esteem issues, not thinking that I was adequate or or worthy enough, feeling like I was overlooked and always have a compensate that thought process with my actions. Um, yeah. in, end up going to college um, in Houston, went to the Art Institute of Houston. And that's where I was, in, I was able to kind of create my own identity. So yeah. I became this persona, I became this rapper, I became this artist named Suicide while I was in, uh, was in Houston. And I was able to, whatever was an issue in Baton Rouge yeah. would not be an issue in Houston. Like I was able to actually create a persona in Houston during college that I'm going to be whatever I wanted to be. Yeah. So what I did, I started studying rappers in this time. I started studying their posadas, their attitudes, who they were, their mannerisms, their mm-hmm. style of dress. And I begin to take those things on. And because I had this persona, the persona started to allow me to change my, uh, the way I would think. I no longer had a self-esteem problem because I'm now listening to all these artists that have this bravado and this ego. And I begin to take on that ego and that began to bring on women. Not knowing that it wasn't necessarily me taking on that persona. It was just a confidence. Uh Um, so I began to, uh, going this attention from women in Houston and then there led me down a spiral of a lot of insecurities a lot of uh a nights of and battles of am I am am, am I worth it uh-huh. do she like me because of me and I can't be myself anymore so now I'm taking on a persona of someone else this whole entire time so <clears throat> fast forward I come back to Louisiana I come back to Baton Rouge but now I I'm in a place where this persona and my personality are go- are clashing kind of. Yeah. Like I'm asking myself questions like who am I really? And I can't be myself to get the people that like me. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I can't even be I can't be your cuz they're used to suicide. Yeah. That was the person they was used to. So I can't be you or anybody because people are used to suicide and because they were used to this character, this character and not necessarily me. I used to have these battles like, yo, I can't even be myself. So it wasn't until that clash that I started to 
truly find my identity in Christ. And it was one day I was driving to work um, and I was just like, I'm tired of living this life. I'm, I'm tired of living this, this persona of being someone else and not fully being embraced for who I was. Yeah. And because I, I, I was tired of living it, I just cried out to God. And most people will tell you they got saved in church. And that was just not my story. That's not my testimony. My testimony I is I was in my car driving to work. I was in my car driving to work, <laughs> listening to this song. And this song was talking about my life at the time. Um, and I just had tears down my eyes, not knowing why I'm crying, but realizing all the little times my mama told me to cry out to Jesus this one specific time I actually did that yeah and when I cried out to him I cried out to him from a perspective of um listen I don't know who you are I haven't known you my whole life I I, I heard who you were through my mother and my father yeah. I heard who you were through my aunts and my sisters and brothers but I don't want that I want a true relationship with you and if you're real I'll let the world know that you're real. But if you're fake, I will dedicate my life to making sure the world knows that you're fake. I love it. I love it. Bro. That was really my plea to God at that yeah. moment. Yeah, and God don't mind. Um, And that's what I got to tell some people, man. God don't mind being questioned or called out because he'll show himself to be true. Correct, correct. I agree with that 100%. Because a lot of people tell you, you can't question God. No. I did. <laughs> I did. That was yeah. my that I that's how I initially began my relationship with him. Yeah. I questioned him. And I'll tell anybody after that day, my life never changed. God consistently showed himself for me during that time of navigating and wanting to know more of him. Because I told him if I if you will show you show yourself to me, uh -huh. if you will let me know that you're real, I will give my life to you. And I meant it. And I still do. Man, that's beautiful. Um, so that definitely was my journey, my narrow, uh, my navigation through um, to who I was. Now, through this whole process, I had to unpeel back more and more layers. Yeah. And his insecurities came into play. It's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to trip you out. But his insecurity came into play. Me and my wife, we were watching uh, Greenleaf. Yeah. Uh -huh. And there was a part during Greenleaf where this guy was battling homosexuality and he couldn't go to his wife. Yeah. I know you remember that part? that part? I do. Yeah, yeah. I do. Balance held homosexuality, he couldn't go to his wife. And it was in this moment, God was like, what if you create a space he could go to? That's dope. That's dope. So, I love it. So from his insecurity, it was a space in which men were who were battling very battling things that they could not go to their spouse for, go to their significant others for, go to their go to their family for. They can yeah. come. I created a space in which they can come, and and without feeling judgment, without feeling pressure, but seeing a brother actually reach out to them and saying, "Listen, brother, I'm battling." It may not be that exact battle, but yeah. I can tell you about the battle of lust. I can tell you about the battles of the mind. I can tell you about the battles of hiding my in my my identity and other things to look a certain way. Yeah. And we can meet at that bridge and That's we can right. work and navigate this this thing through. That's right, man. Let me backtrack a little bit, brother, because um man, I got to give my hats off to you because people don't understand like you said you're from the north side. So, yeah. I'm fr I'm from Dixie. And all of yeah. that is in the 70805. But you from the actual hood where NBA young boy is from. You know what I'm saying? The top Yeah, I know him. Yeah. <laughs> the top rapper in the country. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a smaller area. Mm -hmm. And um, but at the same time, you well, first of all, I didn't graduate high school. I dropped out in ninth grade twice. So uh and I went to Capitol. So I went to I, I made it by the grace of God to high school, you know, after being expelled um in the eighth grade and got to Capitol, did six months, then tried it again the next year, did six months, but I never made it out the ninth grade because the streets was calling me. Mm -hmm. And 
the sad thing is, bro, I had the potential. I had the mind. Like I was an honor roll student when I was going to elementary school at Delmont. Um, I was supposed to go to Strummer Middle, you know, because I qualified for that magnet program. Mm. But I got lost. I got lost in the shuffle, bro, because um, because of image, like you're saying. Um, me and myself, bro, I had both parents, but we had limited resources. So I didn't have everything everyone else had. And I was always insecure, bro. Yeah. About my clothing, about my um my shoes, my skin color. Cause you know, back when we was growing up, uh, yeah, they ain't like you ain't like dark, dark skin, skin wasn't in, yeah, bro. Not, but <laughs> they ain't like us back then. I'm telling you, dark skin definitely wasn't in. And um you already know uh, around the eighties when we were born, that's when uh, the hardcore hip hop came into play and then it rolled over into the nineties and just kept getting more aggressive. Yeah. And I gravitated towards that because um, I was the only child also, you know? So like, man, I ran into some stuff, bro. Just, just being picked on and, played with by people who had siblings and cousins and you know they all were kind of just gang up on me for no reason so Mm. it was like I had to become tough and then once I found out I had a little toughness in me it became addictive you know so I kind of stuck with that role but man how did you graduate from a struma high because a struma and and capital that's 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 the same same thing you know yeah um how did you graduate, bro? Oh, man, to be honest with, with you, I was a nerd. I was a ghetto nerd. Like, I was always fascinated with uh, comic books in school and stuff. The thing that helped me in school was I was, I wouldn't, uh, two things. You were, you were the only child, but I had a bigger brother. Like, my yeah. older brother was the, the drug dealer. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So my older brother already had the rep. Like he, that crip from Dixie, yeah. like my brother, my brothers are from Dixie. Like I, I was born in Dixie and then we not migrated to- uh To the North side. The North side. But so he had to rep. So seeing him grow and seeing him in, 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 as he navigated through high school as a kid, I was like, yo, that's who I wanted to be, but I don't want it to be that way. Yeah. Like he always pushed me to to stay in school you know what i'm saying yeah so he my brother helped me navigate my brother like he was my brother was my role model when i was high school he had the women he had he had the cars he had the drugs if you looked at him crazy it was on site so he had the reputation he had those things but he always pushed me away from the street like he's amazing bro that's amazing you know what i'm saying he pushed me away from this. So for me, it was, that's Crip little bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So for me, all I had to do was just, just go to school. So I went to school and I went to a stroma and I, and what also helped me is I joined a lot of stuff. Like I, I played football. I did acting, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I was in clubs and stuff. Like I tried to for real, for real, keep my, my mind from the street. Yeah. Uh-huh. The, the most the best way that I could and I also had people who were who who were cool that wanted to go to school like I saw so, so okay. my community helped me like tremend, tremendously my community helped me yeah. like even my brother the drug dealer at the time was like nah nah this ain't the path you're gonna go little bro you ain't going this way yeah you know what I'm saying like he saw the talent like he even he even knew I could rap at a young age, she was like, nah, you're going to navigate this way. This ain't you. You know what I'm saying? This me. Wow. So man. you're going to go to, you're going to go to school. And I also started to uh, form a community around me uh-huh. that are also will entice me with school as opposed to the street, but the street, it, it, it was embedded in me. Yeah. So even when they tried to sway me, I still, I still find myself there sometimes, but my brother will always find out, bro. Wow, man. <laughs> like, you yeah. always be like, nah, this ain't you. This ain't you. Go back. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. That's the amazing. community. That's amazing, man. And I think that's what I'm trying to build also. Um, 
And then I, I kind of came up with this motto now that I kind of said on the last two shows, um, if you got the game and you don't share it with somebody else that make you a hater. And, yeah. Um, that's, that's the people I want to salute. And that's the type of person I want to be, man. I want to give people the game. And I think I got that from my mom, bro. Cause um, you know, my mom, was she was older when she had me. So she had twice the wisdom, twice the game. And she would always give that to me. And then my pops yeah. also, you know, my pops, um, he was from the park and a uh, tough guy. He didn't talk a lot, man, but um, I guess his presence kind of kept yeah. me from going too far. Cause um, I could have went farther than I went, you know, but I think God has set up some boundaries just like I think he set up some in your life. Um, yeah. Cause definitely bro, if my mom was single, in the neighborhood by herself, I would have ran over. Yeah. Because she loved me too much. And then, um, you know, I just would have been out there. And I know I wouldn't have survived, bro. I would have been dead on somebody's corner or in jail with a life sentence. Wow. Yeah. Because um, that's, that's the way everything was going, bro. All my peers, like the guys, the OGs, like, uh, I don't know if you know Squally Pope, but... I grew up next door to Squally and you know what I'm saying? Growing up, like playing football in the streets, uh, flipping, you know what I'm saying? The stuff we used to do in the hood to him opening the first trap house, me not knowing what's going on, getting the money grilled up. And then, you know, you could just see the change, bro. They went from playing with us in the streets to the, now they too hard. Now they wearing the Lokes because the Lokes was in style back then. The, the uh, they dress started to change. The attitude started to change. And uh, it was attractive. It yeah. was really attractive, bro, because, you know, they were the um, hood superstars. Yeah. You know, so yep. like, um, even though I didn't get to, you know, I got out there but I think God had his grace on me too, brother. Cause I made yeah. it, um, even though I didn't graduate high school, I got my GED. Um, and I don't have a criminal record. You know, I might have some misdemeanors here and there, some traffic tickets, but like, I don't have no felonies, no drug charges, no, um, firearm charges, man. And like, it was Hello. just like, God was just covering me. Another thing that you said that, uh, that I really can, um, you know what I'm saying, feel is you didn't get saved in church. My whole purpose of this platform and podcast is because um, the secular world is taking over. T.I., Killer Mike, everybody got their perspective on something, but nobody um, giving God his glory or trying to share the Lord with somebody. Yeah. I got saved in my living room, bro. Mm. <laughs> I got saved in my living room sitting on a half a pound of weed because, you know, I was hustling at the time, illegal guns all in the house and a three year old daughter, bro. And God used my daughter and my situation to push me forward to, you know what I'm saying? Bow my knee to him. Yeah. And he was already dealing with me, though. And that's what people don't understand, bro. Like, before you get saved, God is already yeah. giving you warnings and, and wooing you and, and all kind of stuff. And uh, I also believe that he had he does that to people who, you know what I'm saying, that have gone into eternity also, you know, because God is a loving God. So he gives those chances. He gives those nudges and gives us an opportunity to receive him um, for we meet our fate. And yeah. just by the grace of God, bro, my, my mom, she raised me in church. I knew the word. So it was hard for me to take anything from somebody because I thought I was right because I knew a little bit of the word, which I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know any scripture at all. But um, I wasn't scared to go to church, you know, even though I was thugging, doing whatever I was doing. If somebody invited me to church, I'll go. Um, but I never went to an altar call. If I did go to an altar call, it probably lasted for maybe about three days. And then I was back to my old self. 
but um on this instance man i had ended up um smoking some weed bro and how god played it bro he had my daughter in the bed with me and you know if it was just me i'd have, I'd have played it off as a trip but my daughter felt something bro she felt something supernatural going on an internal battle within me and uh she was dead asleep and got up out the bed and um went in the hallway and said daddy i don't want to sleep with you i want to go sleep with my mom and uh man she ran off went into the um living room so i'm walking behind and my mom she was in there watching um i think that was the christian network when it was like on channel 18 or something like that you know getting her word in and i knew right then and there, man i needed to bow my knee and uh my mama led me in the sinner's prayer and i gave my life to the lord at 21 um you know and then I backslid, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, I got into that word. I was sold out and, um, you know what I'm saying? I lived the best life I tried to live, you know what I'm saying? On my own power and strength for about eight months. And then I backslid for two years. Uh, but you know, God was gracious enough to call me back again. Um, yeah. through, through a lady that was witnessing at my job and I told her my situation, she prayed, you know, for me. And, um, before you knew it, I was back. And so I'm glad you shared that. And then it, it brought up my story because people think it's all about church. Right. But God is outside of the church. Um, you know what I'm saying? His, his power reaches us no matter where we are. And um, so for any, what would you say to anyone that's, that's feeling that, that tug and, um, you know, that calling on their heart. I would definitely say that God is, uh, he's convicting you. Um, and the tugging on your heart is, is always an indicator that you know that uh, there's more, there's purpose inside of you that's trying to urge its way out, that's trying to yeah. be, uh, trying to line itself up with the creator of your purpose. Amen. You know what I'm saying? And a lot yeah. of times that's what, what 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 pushes us to God. It's the it's this love that convicts us and that purpose inside of us is saying, I know I need to be doing more. There's that I know I need to line up with the creator of this purpose to do more. So if you feel that nudge in your heart, trust me, I've been there, I've tried to reject it. Yeah. I've hit, I've ran from it. You're not, you're not, <laughs> oh, you're not boy. by yourself. Yeah. You're not by yourself there. So I encourage you just to submit to it. Submit. And, and and this is a process. You don't have to feel like you have to, once you submit to it, that you, you're going to know everything and you're going to do everything, but daily just grow with God. That's right. Form your relationship with him. Open up his word, open up the word and start reading who you are, what you are, and how you are, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and when you started to navigate those things, everything that you're feeling inside start making sense. And they'd be like, oh, this is how I'm feeling. This is what I need to do. This is how I'm moving. This is how he's shifting me. This is what he's placed inside of me. This is what's calling me. And this is why it's calling me. Preach, my brother. Man, that's what I'm talking about. And, um, I definitely can speak to that too, bro. Cause I've been, who I've been on this journey at least 15 years, man. Um, and I'm not who I started out to be. Right. You know, like, uh, before my list slip and fall, I was looking at everybody like, look, man, he did it for me. He can do it for you. Ain't no excuse. You need to just come on and lay it down. But sometimes it ain't that easy. You know, yeah. um, sometimes you got to allow him just constantly work that um you know what i'm saying regeneration that's going on that sanctification that's going on it don't it don't stop till we leave yeah until we cross over into eternity and like now just like with me and you on this platform the things that i have done in my life um you invite me to be on your podcast you invite me to you know what i'm saying do a joint album together Man, I never saw that stuff in me. Uh, I knew I had a a purpose because my mom always spoke that to my life. Yeah. 
but I never knew it would turn out like it is now, especially coming from where we come from to be a husband. You know what I'm saying? Like I've been married 14 years, bro. That's unheard of. And I'm only 37. I make uh 38 next month. Yeah. Um, and to have, to be a homeowner also a homeowner, yeah. um, to have a career, you know, where, where I'm making decent money, where I can take care of my family and then also share with uh, God's house. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what he calls us to do. It's not about, you know, uh, buying the pastor uh, a Cadillac. It's about storing up, you know what I'm saying, for people in need. Because um, our it was never meant for the government to take care of the people. Yeah, it's always been the church's responsibility. And I don't think, you know, of course, people have misused the funds, so it turns them off. But, man, when you give and give to God, uh, and it's not also just giving in the plate, but it's, it's seeing need. You yeah. know, um, my mom taught me how to do that, bro, how to see need. And then she also pointed out something to me in the Bible where it talks about um, you never know when you're entertaining angels, you know? Yeah. Um, you never know when God testing you just to see where your heart at and have that come back to you, you know, in, in, in different amounts, you know, you may receive a hundred fold, you might receive 50, but anything is better than nothing. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to see what else, man. Cause like we, we dropping so many gems and I don't want to miss nothing. Um, mm -hmm. and we may not get it in one show because, I think this peer your potential thing, bro, is kind of um, it does go hand in hand with his insecurities and everything. Yeah. You know, it, it's just about allowing God to free you. You know, I had to fight through a lot. Like um, you was talking about, you know, some of the things that you had to go through. I had to go through dressing different. You know, not wearing my pants to my knees and um you know the 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 big shirts and but just transitioning learning yeah. how to tie a tie you know i had to yeah. go to youtube to learn how to tie a tie i did and, too <laughs> <laughs> you know and um so this this has been on my heart for a while but i think god is bringing it full circle now to where we can help not just the black community you know that's where my heart at but i'm uh i'm pro life you know, which means I, I believe in the fetus, you know what I'm saying? That's unborn. But I also believe in every color, every culture, you know, that walks um, God's earth, man, that we're all equal in that, you know, there's no reason why the black community can't help somebody in the white community, you know, Correct. because we all have different experiences and you should be able to learn from everyone, especially, you know, when it comes down to growth. Yeah. Uh, so outside of the community, um, what has God used to to grow you and your knowledge and um, your understanding about it's just not about what we know and what we grew up around? That's good, man. So outside of the community, God has uh, used. um my children, my sons to help me understand who he truly is. And uh, uh, the intricate, and even in marriage. Yeah. Cause both of those oh, things yeah. you have to be completely selfless in them to, to successfully complete them. Parenting, marriage is one thing and then parenting is another. Yeah. And both of them show and display who God truly are. Both of them. Wow. Because in marriage, of course the word tells us that Love your wife like Christ left the church. Yeah. So I began to study that verse and understanding it in marriage. In marriage, you you really have to sacrifice your all to make this oneness um, be successful. Yeah. To continue to thrive. And then when you become a parent, then you understand um, sonship a bit better. You understand mm -hmm. the, the desire when a word says, we cry out, the spirit cries out, Abba, Father. And you understand that that a child has an unconditional love for you. 
and That's they're right. looking for you for provision. They're looking for you for support. They're looking for you for your emotional needs. They're looking for you for all of these things. And then that equates biblically that God looks us at for us. We look at God for all of those things as well. Yeah. So it really truly brought in a practical sense who God was marriage first uh -huh. for my love of Jesus. And then of course, uh, parenting for my love of God. Those things really, really helped me understand him well. Wow, man, that's that's real. Um, and I can say the same, man. Like my wife, uh, just watching her, she don't understand, you know, how much she has ministered to me, right. even though sometimes, um, you know, she may think that um, she don't know as much as me, you know, because I'm. I'm a nerd, you know, I was born a nerd. I, I seek information. So yeah, um, me too. When I got into that word, man, I dove head first. Um, but also now, and then being in ministry, bro, you see certain things where uh pastors have their wives preaching and all that. And you know, I wanted the same thing, but it took me 14 years to understand that God has different avenues for different people. Right. You know, and just sitting down and talking to her and understanding she ministers in a different way. She has to exactly. be able to minister in her way. And I can't make her be what I think she should be or what or what the world, you know, what I'm saying wants her to be. Because when especially in the black church, when they hear pastor wife, they automatically say first lady. Yeah. Or second lady or something like yeah. that. And the that black church, the only place that does that. <laughs> exactly. You know, and that brings on responsibilities that God may not have intended for that person. And, yeah. you know, just finally listening to my wife's heart, man, she has a heart for, for youth and, um, and children, man. She loves the youth and she loves children. She connects with them. Um, I saw it while we were youth pastors, man, for four years and, it turned her into a whole different person, man. She opened up and blossomed. And um, when I felt myself going to, you know, another level, like associate and then feeling like sooner or later I'll be called to the senior role, it frightened her. Yeah. And, you know, I was frustrated thinking is she holding back on God, but no, nah, man, she's just following the way God designed her to be. Yeah. You know, so, um, man, I guess let's go ahead and speak to a brother or sister that might be listening and heard everything that we have gone through and trying to navigate that road for themselves, man. What would you speak to them and how would you encourage them? Man, so the first thing I would, I would, I would simply ask a brother and sister is, is that, um, the prayer that I prayed in a car to my, by myself, hmm. I would simply start with that. I would simply start, start with, I encourage you brother or sister to develop your own relationship with God. Amen. Don't develop a relationship based on what I know. Don't develop a relationship based on what, who your pastor know or who your mother or who your father know. God wants a, a intimate relationship with you. He yes. knows who you are as an individual and he wants to cultivate your gifts and talents and even the purpose he placed inside of you based on who you are. And the only way to get that developed, the only way to get that cultivated, the only way to begin to walk in that is a relationship. So I would encourage that person to have a relationship with God. Get into the word. It doesn't have to be a chapter a day. If you want, I started off with a couple verses a day. Yeah. I started out a couple verses a day, Monday and Tuesday. Then it became, I'm going to do a couple of verses a day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Because uh, I wanted my weekends. Yeah. Then it became Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but Saturday, Sunday off. Then it became every day of the week. Yes, then it didn't become mm -hmm. verses anymore. Then it became chapters. Because my heart began to desire God more and more based on our relationship begin to grow. So I encourage every brother and sister who's hearing my voice, listen to me, 
Pastor Yule is telling you, don't develop a relationship with God based on my knowledge. Based, develop a relation, God, relationship with God based on who you are. Because the enemy will try to take your faith. He's going to do things in this lifetime that's going to try to remove your faith. And if your faith hinges on a man or woman of God as opposed to you, Whew. then it's going to be stripped away. You got it. So I encourage you to develop your relationship with God. Know him for yourself. Like, at the end of the day, nobody can tell me about God because I've experienced him in ways, in depths, in places, supernaturally, that no person can truly, I mean truly, there's no doubt in my mind. Like the old people you say, I know, I know, I know, I know tell who it. God is. And I encourage you to, to have that same type of quote. I know, I know, I know. And that is developed through a relationship, not religion, not things that you think you should do, not putting on specific clothes, not putting on no makeup, not putting on a dress. I know some of my people ain't gonna like that. Yeah. But yeah. based on him and his word and allow your brother that's known as Jesus Christ to go into your heart and change you based Amen. on that relationship. Amen. Well, I sure appreciate you, brother. Man, I'm speechless, bro. I mean, every time I, uh, you know, do one of these with 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 a brother, and man, y'all be preaching, <laughs> and I sure yeah. appreciate it, man. So I'm I'm hoping that God bless this, and that whoever um tunes in, man, it opens their heart and allow them to, uh, be who God has called them to be and to flourish, because that's I love to see people win, man. Yeah. Love to see people win. So I appreciate your time, my brother. And uh, it's an honor, I, brother. I look forward to seeing you again, my brother. And I'm going to let you. Got to do it. We got to do it. Salute, homie. Salute, my brother. I'll catch you later. All right.